Hey everybody. Okay, so this week for May 4th through May 8th, we are going to be talking about the genre of drama. So we are going to start by watching a video about drama from Moby Max. Slave, thou hast slain me. Villain, take my purse. If ever thou wilt thrive, bury my body, and give the letters which thou findst about me to Edmund, Earl of Gloucester. Seek him out upon the English party. Oh, untimely death. Eh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dear Tim and Moby, I want to put on a play at my school, but I really don't know that much about the theater. Can you tell me a little bit about what drama is all about? From Jessica. Well, Jessica, drama is kind of a hard thing to define. Basically, drama is like a story, like the kind you'd read in a book. But instead of being read, the story is acted out in front of an audience. Sure, TV shows are a type of drama. So are movies and plays. Musical theater, in which characters express some of their thoughts and emotion through song and dance, is also a form of drama. Drama can be presented in a variety of ways. Some dramas strive to be very realistic, with characters who speak and act just like regular people. In the plays of Norwegian writer Henrik Ibsen, realistic characters are forced to confront the same problems that people might encounter in real life. Other dramas call attention to the fact that what happens on stage is not real, with plots and characters that are purposely artificial. In Japanese kabuki theater, characters wear elaborate makeup and costumes and speak in a strange, old-fashioned way. No, none of this stuff is particularly new. Believe it or not, people have been putting on plays for more than 2,500 years. It all began in the ancient Greek city of Athens, sometime around 600 BCE. Back then, they'd have these festivals in honor of Dionysus, the Greek god of wine and revelry. Sometimes, a group of people, called a chorus, would get up in front of an audience and tell a story or recite a long narrative poem. Around 534 BCE, a guy called Thespis changed the format a little bit. He acted out the different parts in a song or poem, putting on a mask and speaking in the voices of the characters. Soon, Greek playwrights introduced more and more characters to these performances, and drama as we know it was born. No, they didn't have reality shows back then. The most popular plays were tragedies and comedies. Comedies are plays with happy endings. Tragedies are just the opposite. In a tragedy, a king, queen, or other noble figure usually suffers through some terrible misfortune. But their bad luck is always a result of their own mistakes or errors in judgment. This is called a tragic flaw. The most common tragic flaw is hubris, or too much pride. Tragedies and comedies are still written and performed today. Yeah, that death scene I was performing before, that's from a tragedy. But no matter what kind of play you're writing or performing, the main goal should be to get the audience to care about the characters and their problems. When this is done successfully, the audience identifies with the characters. They want the heroes to succeed and the villains to suffer. So, at the end of a comedy, the audience should be happy that things work out well for the characters. At the end of a tragedy, they should feel sadness and pity. This intense emotional experience is called a catharsis. Oh, knock it off, you drama queen. William Shakespeare was an expert at bringing out catharsis from his audiences. During his heyday, people from all levels of society, from the poor and uneducated to royalty, would come to the Globe Theatre in London and enjoy his plays. His characters were usually motivated by complicated and sometimes conflicting emotions, and they expressed their problems in some of the most beautiful poetic language ever written. Shakespeare's plays are still incredibly popular. They're performed almost everywhere, in schools, on TV and in the movies, and even in major theaters in New York and London. Well, I'm glad you like my scene, but I don't think I have a shot starring on Broadway or anything like that. Well, my drama teacher said that my acting is cartoonish and two-dimensional. I wonder what she meant by that. Okay, so let's look at our drama anchor chart. Drama is a story actors perform. So it has a description of the setting, and we know a setting is where the story takes place. It's sometimes divided into scenes or parts with different settings. Has dialogue or speech that actors say and has stage directions that tell how actors should move or speak their lines. 
So today the story that we're going to read is called Where Do They Go in Rain or Snow? And the first thing that we're going to do, like always, is we are going to look at some vocabulary words that we're going to see in the story that may be unfamiliar to us. So the first word that we see is den. A den is a wild animal's home or resting place. So I have a picture. And this looks like some little doggies in a den. This is their little home or their resting place. The next one is slippery. I know you guys know what that means. So it's likely to cause slipping or sliding. So this is, if you guys ever seen this sign when you're somewhere, that means you need to walk very carefully because there's some stuff on the floor that could make you slip. Then you have surface. And the surface is the top or outside part of something. So you guys, when you're at school, you write on the surface of your desk. You don't write inside your desk. You don't work on the bottom of your desk. You work on the surface or the top of your desk. The next word is underground, and that means beneath ground. So this looks like this is maybe like a tunnel or something that is beneath the ground or underground. And the last one is survive or continue to live. So we are all out here still surviving or continuing to live. So here is the story that we are going to read. Where do they go in rain or snow? And if you look over here, you'll see that these are different characters. If we were in class, then I would have, I would choose different people to play different characters. But instead, we're just going to have to see that these are the different characters. I'm not going to say course one, narrator squirrel. So you just have to know, you have to follow along and you have to know who I am, who I'm talking at. Because in a play, you would just say your line. You wouldn't say your name first. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. When rain falls in a forest, a squirreling squirrel suddenly stops. I pull my tail over my head and makes a great umbrella. Higher up, there's a hawk. I puff out my feathers to stay warm and dry. Caree, caree. What does a chickadee do? Dee, 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 dee. I hide inside my tree hole home. So you can see all these different characters, right? And the illustrations or the pictures help me understand the setting as I read. So if I was watching this drama on stage, I might see a background scenery that looks like a forest. The animals might be characters in costumes. So they wouldn't actually have a squirrel on stage or a bird. They would have somebody dressed up as a squirrel or a bird. Just like that play that we went to for music. Um, and so... I would look and listen to understand the setting characters and events. A deer takes cover under a leafy canopy. All the leaves and branches block the rain. Foxes nestle together inside a warm, cozy den. I could use a nap. Oh, me too. When rain falls on a field, a plump little caterpillar crawls under a leaf. Time for a snack. Munch, munch. An adult butterfly dangles from a nearby flower head. I don't mind hanging upside down. A raindrop knocks a ladybug off a slippery stem. It bounces into the air and tumbles into the ground. Don't worry about me. I have a hard exoskeleton. So let's just take a second and just look at all these different things and characters. So as I read, I think about predictions that I made about the text. The title told me that the story would be about animals, about what animals do in the rain and the snow. So this part of the text is called When the Rain Falls. So far, my prediction max matches the text. I am reading about animals and what they do when it rains. 
in this picture over here, I see each of the characters. So I see the caterpillar. Do y'all see the caterpillar? Do you see, and he's sitting on a leaf. Do you see a butterfly? What's she doing? She's hanging on a flower. The ladybug is on the ground. Did she fall or does she want to be there? So she says, don't worry about me. I have a hard exoskeleton. So she's fine, right? But right here it says that a raindrop knocks a ladybug off a slippery stem. It bounces into the air and tumbles to the ground. So she did fall. She didn't want to be there, but she's like, hey, it's all right. I have a hard exoskeleton. It saved my fall. All right. So a spider watches and waits as the rain beats down. Looks like I'll have to rebuild my web. A little mouse crouches under a fallen leaf. Squeak, squeak. I don't like the rain. What about bees and ants? I hide in my hive and stay busy, helping my friends make honey. Ant, I stay safe in my underground nest. There's always lots of work to do. When rain falls on a wetland, a turtle tucks in its tiny head and doesn't move an inch. I listen to the raindrops crashing down on my shell. Plop, plop, drip, drop. A dragonfly swoops past the turtles and lands on a cattail. I rest below the cattail's fluffy brown top. I have a question about the setting. First, the setting was in a rainy forest, right? Then in a rainy field. What is the setting now? So on this setting, if you look right here, the course says, when rain falls in a wetland or on a wetland. So I realized that I need to be paying attention to what the chorus says because the setting has changed. A whirl gig, beetle, a whirly gig, beetle swims in circles on the water surface. Yikes, those crashing raindrops make it hard to stay afloat. Where are the birds? Clink, clink, here I am hiding inside a thick bush. Quack, quack, not me, I keep on swimming. Rain or shine, raindrops slide right off my oily feathers. I continue to ask myself questions as I read. What do the animals do when it rains? On this page, I see two different birds and I wonder about them. And then I ask myself, do they both respond to the rain in the same way? What does the sparrow do when it rains? He hides. But what does the duck do? He seems to barely notice the rain. He keeps swimming because why? He says that the raindrops just slide right off his oily feathers. So it's just like raincoats. If you guys think about what a real raincoat is made out of, the rain just kind of just falls right off of it. So it doesn't just 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 build onto it and make the, it, it heavier and heavier like if you were wearing your regular clothes and you just got wet. Your clothes kind of get heavier, right? But in a rain, in a rain jacket, the water just slides right off just like a duck's feathers. So let's look over here. Now remember we said that we had to pay attention to the course because the course tells us where the setting is. So this course right here says when rain falls in a desert. A rattlesnake squeezes into a rocky crevice. I curl up tight and fall asleep. Where does a tarantula go? I crawl into a hole and hide. Bats fly off into a off to a hillside cave. Teet -teet. We just hang around until the rain stops. As I near the end of the drama, I want to talk about it. Okay, so when rain falls, I learned about many different animals and what they do when it rains. But I want to know which places and animals others like best. A tiny elf owl peeks out of a hole in a cactus. Dot, 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 dot. I like to watch the rain fall. A spig doof toad only comes out in the rain. It digs to the surface, finds a mate, and lays its eggs. Then I dig back into the sand. See you next time it rains. When the rain stops, animals living in fields and forests, wetlands and deserts return to their daily routines. Oh, so that's what happens when the rain stops. So then all the animals would jump forward and make animal sounds. And the end. 
All right, so that was when it rained. So now we're going to read Under the Snow. Ooh, all right. Under the snow in a field, ladybugs pack themselves into a hole in an old stone wall. I like spending the winter with all my friends. It's like having a giant slumber party. Not me. I wish I had a little elbow room. A snake rests inside another hole in the same wall. I curl up tight and sleep. So as I start to read the second reader's theater text, under the snow, I look at the pictures. I notice a difference in, se in the setting from when it rain falls to when rain, uh, to the pictures in the snow. So in this text, the pictures show snowy settings. And I wonder the, if the animals I read about will be different. So far, it might seem like it. So let's keep reading. What does a vole do under the snow? I tunnel through the white fluffy stuff all winter long. A chipmunk snoozes in an underground nest. Chip, chip, chirp, chirp. Sometimes I wake up to snacks on nuts and seeds. As I begin to read, I think about what I expect to learn from this drama. Since the first drama setting took place in the rain, and this one takes place under the snow, I expect to learn about what different animals do when it snows. Under the snow in a forest, a morning cloak butterfly rests in a pile of br brush. I'm saving up all my energy for spring. What's inside that rotting log? Look, it's a centipede. Winter weather cools my body so much I can barely move. A bumblebee queen rests in a nearby crack. It's nice to take a break after such a busy summer. A wood frog hides in leaves on the fl forest floor. Quack, squonk. Winter doesn't bother me. I can freeze solid and still survive. How cool is that? So it'll be interesting to talk about some of the same animals and the insects from when rain falls. And we can compare what the animals do when it rains to what they do when it snows. A woolly bear caterpillar snoozes just a few inches away. I curl up my body so my head almost touches my tail. Just below the ground, a spotted salamander waits out the coldest months of the year. If winter's here, can spring be far behind? Deeper underground, a woodchuck sleeps soundly all winter long. Chuck, Chuck, do you think I'll see my shadow on February 2nd? I'm thinking about how the illustrations work along with the text to tell the story. So the animal characters on page 569 are the caterpillar, salamander, and woodchuck. I see all of these animals in the illustration, so this helps me understand the story. So seeing all of these animals where they're actually at and what they're saying they're doing is helping me be able to picture it better in my mind and understand it better. So make sure you're looking at these pictures while we're reading. Now this is under the snow in a pond. A blue gill circles slowly through the chilly water. Glug, glug. I sure wish I had enough energy to catch that little bug. The water boatman swimming nearby has a different point of view. Thank goodness that big fish can't chase me down. A carp rests quietly on the muddy bottom. I wonder why that blue gill can swim, but I'm stuck down here. Hmm. That's funny. Two tiny water striders lie just a few inches away. Lucky for us, that carp's totally pooped out. You can say that again. Lucky for us, that carp's totally pooped out. Ugh, oh, please. A green frog and a painted turtle rest in the mud and wait for winter to end. Dude, dude, I'm sick of this. How long until spring? Not much longer, I hope. My toes are getting wrinkled. There is a new character on this page that is an insect that I am not familiar with. Because back there we talked about what is a water strider. Hmm. But this picture helps me see what it looks like. Under the snow in a wetland, a beaver family huddles together inside a cozy log. Wet, wet, wet. I could use a snack. Me too. Let's swim over to our storage pile and grab a stick. 
Just below the wetland's icy surface, a red-spotted newt dodges and whizzes and whirls. Whee! I don't mind if spring never comes, but everyone else is looking forward to warm, sunny days. At the end of the text, the author says that many of the characters are looking forward to spring. I think that this is part of the author's message. She wants us to understand that animals can live, that animals' lives can be difficult in the winter. Just like humans, I, it's hard to move around in the winter. I don't like when it gets too cold. And as time passes, the sun's rays slowly grow stronger. And each day is a little bit longer until finally spring arrives. I think about what I learned from this text. I learned about many different animals and what they do in cold, snowy red weather. I read about four places, a field, a forest, a pond, and a wetland. I learned that some animals burrow into shelter areas, some live just fine in the snow, and others sleep through the winter. I want to talk about what others learned and found interesting. So what do you find interesting? Did you find anything else interesting in the story?